Are you sacrificing your insecurities to the Lord, or are you only bringing sins of insecurity to Him? Deep question today. <laughs> Welcome to the Daily Devo. I am Vince Miller. This week we have been in 1 Samuel chapter 15. I've titled the chapter, The Consequences of Disobedience, and that is exactly what we've seen. We've seen King Saul's disobedience. So today I'm going to read a moment where Samuel, the prophet, is going to call King Saul out. So let's begin in verse 17 today. And Samuel said, Though you are little in your own eyes, are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go, devote to destruction the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you pounce on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have devoted the Amalekites to destruction. But the people, the people, took of the spoil and sheep and oxen and the best of the things devoted to destruction to sacrifice to the Lord your God, your God, in Gilgal. So King Saul here perceives his voice and leadership as small, but his role was not little or small. Saul was God's anointed and appointed, and his voice and leadership mattered in the kingdom. God wanted to use them both to lead his people in the kingdom. Now, based on what we have learned about Saul, there are two internal forces within him acting on him. This deep insecurity that is combined with this opportunistic self-interest. Deep insecurity and then this opportunistic self-interest. And both come into play right here. They're exposed when he is confronted by Samuel's big why question. We all, we all struggle with this because we all have insecurities. We're just like Saul. We have insecurities in our relationships, our leadership, our marriage, our career. Yet these insecurities, when unrealized and left unaddressed, can awaken these devious forms of opportunistic self-interest. And they result in us taking advantage because we feel the need for an advantage to satisfy those insecurities. And what we think no one sees, well, discerning people in our lives see every time. So in this situation, Samuel understands and sees what Saul has done. There's cattle lowing and sheep bleeding in the distance that should have been slaughtered. But what has he done? Well, he's saved them for a sacrifice to the Lord. That's justification, by the way. Then when Saul is confronted with this big why question, he does the same four things that all insecure and guilty people do. Here they are. Write them down. Rationalize, deflect, blame, and explain rationalize, deflect, blame, and explain. The same four things every time. So instead of Saul admitting and owning up to his own deep insecurities and devious selfishness, he just does these four things, which is what all guilty people do. So here's some advice. It's something that I've had to learn the hard way, by the way. <laughs> it's simply this. Confess your insecurities before you have to confess your sin. That's the principle here. Confess your insecurities before you have to actually confess your sin. So everyone has deep insecurities. Most of the time, we don't even take the time to understand them. But it's far better to acknowledge, understand, confess, and lead them before they lead you right into sin. And because Saul doesn't confess his insecurities, but rather rationalizes, deflects, blames, and explains... Here's how Samuel responds to him in verses 22 and 23. And Samuel said, Has the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? That's a rhetorical question. <laughs> Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination. And presumption is as iniquity and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected you from being king. 
Ouch. So with this context, you can see the key text and the key point of this chapter. God does not care about Saul's sacrifices, mainly because they were not his sacrifices. They were selfish sacrifices contrived from insecurity, sin, and disobedience. Besides, God doesn't want someone else's best. He wants your best. He wants your best derived from wholehearted obedience because you find your security in him, not in your own insecurities. You see, God wants your full obedience, not your empty rituals. There again, your full obedience and not your empty, meaningless rituals. Half-hearted attempts. Don't cut it with God. God doesn't want what you think is best. He wants what he knows is best for you. And this text calls you to examine your heart and to move beyond the rationalizing, deflecting, blaming, and explaining. So today, challenge yourself to address your insecurities. You have some. And instead of bringing the best of your presumptions or assumptions, and you know what we do when we assume, sacrifice your insecurities to God, and then you will know what it means to be wholeheartedly submitted to him. I love you guys. I pray this has blessed you. Live all in for him who lived all in for you.